Hi, I'm Doug Jensen with Vortex Media. Welcome to the fourth episode of Sony's XDCAM Essentials video training series. In our last episode, I explained why picture quality isn't the only thing to think about when you're selecting a camera. There are other factors to consider, and workflow efficiency is right at the top of that list. Now, if you haven't watched episode three yet, which is titled The Benefits of XDCAM Workflow Part One, I suggest you watch that video first and then come back and watch this video, which is part two of that topic. So if you've already seen part one, then you know how custom clip naming and last clip delete can save you a lot of time in post. Now I want to show you four more features of XDCAM that can increase your productivity and streamline your workflow. Those are camera data files, clock time code, shot marks, and clip flags. Let's begin with camera data files. A camera data file is kind of like a preferences file that allows you to save all of your favorite custom settings in one convenient little container. And then that file can be saved on a memory card, or in some cases a USB thumb drive, and removed from the camera. So what's the advantage of that? Well, there are several. First, it provides you with a backup copy of all your custom settings in case the camera is ever reset back to the factory default mode. Second, it allows you to quickly reload all of your personal settings after someone else has used your camera. You know how irritating it can be when someone else borrows something of yours and changes a bunch of the settings? Especially settings that you might not even notice have been changed. Third, if you share a camera with coworkers, fellow students, or anybody else, everybody can have his or her own camera data file that allows them to instantly set the camera back to their own personal preferences. Fourth. If you're working on a multi-camera shoot and you're using several identical camera models, you can instantly clone them so all their pictures match. And fifth, suppose you need to hire someone in a distant location to shoot an interview for a project you're working on. You can send them a copy of your camera data file via email, they can load it into their camera, and instantly they'll be able to shoot with the exact same settings that you're using on the rest of the video, thus ensuring a very seamless and consistent look to the whole production. So which custom settings are contained in a camera data file? Well, almost every menu on the camera, including the video format, all six picture profiles, zebras, peaking, all the assigned buttons, white balance presets, viewfinder displays, and even clip naming. Here's how to store a camera data file once you've got your camera set up exactly how you want it. First, press the menu button. Navigate to the Others menu page and find the camera data submenu. There are only two choices, store or recall. That's pretty simple. Press store and then execute to save all of the camera's current settings onto a memory card. Later, when that memory card is mounted on the desktop of your computer, you can navigate down through the folders to locate the setup file. On a UDF formatted card, this is where the setup file is nested. And this is the location on a FAT formatted card. Once you've located the file, you can make a copy of it, archive it, or share it with somebody else who has the same model of camera. Now to load a setup file into the camera, insert the card that has the file on it, press the menu button, go back to the camera data submenu, choose recall, and then execute to load it. But keep in mind that it's an all or nothing proposition. You can't pick and choose which settings to update. You'll be changing all of your picture profiles and dozens of other menu settings all at the same time. So make sure that's really what you want to do before you do it. Now even if the card is removed from the camera, it will still retain the settings until you recall a different camera data file or make changes to the camera's menus directly. The second workflow benefit of XDCAM that I want to talk about today is clock mode timecode. In our last episode of XDCAM Essentials, I explained how logging clips by the actual file name instead of using timecode numbers can be a big time saver. But sometimes, writing down timecode numbers is still necessary. For example, if I'm shooting a lengthy interview, a press conference, a wedding, or some other event where a single clip might run 30 minutes or longer, having someone on the crew write down the clip name won't help very much in post when it comes to finding a specific soundbite or some other point of interest that occurred someplace in the middle of a clip. That's where timecode really comes in handy. But not just any timecode. With XDCAM, I prefer to configure the timecode so it matches the actual time of day. 
That way a production assistant, producer, client, or anyone else taking notes during the shoot just has to look at their watch or a clock to know approximately what the time code value is at any given moment. Now you might be thinking, but Doug, cameras have had an option for free run time code for decades. And that's true. But when we used to shoot on tape, we couldn't really use free run or clock mode time code because any breaks in the time code between the shots would make it almost impossible to log footage and batch capture from tape into your editing system. But now that we've gone tapeless with XDCam, there's no more logging or batch capturing to bother with. So you can use whatever type of time code that you want. Here's how to set it up. First, press the menu button. Go to the time code user bits set menu page. Choose time code. Select the mode submenu, and then choose clock. That's all there is to it. Notice that now the time code numbers are functioning just like a digital clock, and you're ready to start shooting. Another workflow benefit of XDCAM is called shot marks. A shot mark is sort of like an invisible electronic bookmark that you can embed anywhere in your video clip in order to help you zero in on that particular part of the clip much faster in post thus saving you valuable time during editing. Now we just finished talking about using clock mode time code for logging sound bites with pen and paper during the shoot, but inserting shot marks is a much more sophisticated way of accomplishing the same thing. For example, after you've programmed one of the assigned buttons on your camera for the shot mark function, all you have to do is press that button to instantly insert a shot mark anytime something important happens while you're recording. And depending on the particular video format that you've selected, you can insert as many as 999 shot marks into a single clip. Now there are several ways of adding shot marks to your clips, but the simplest method, as I just said, is to use one of the assign buttons. And I'll show you how to set that up on this PMW160. First, press the menu button. Go to the Others menu page. Select the Assign button submenu. And then choose one of the camera's assign buttons. There are about 30 different functions that can be assigned to each assign button, and if you scroll down far enough, you'll find Shot Mark 1 and Shot Mark 2. Having two different types of shot marks makes this function even more useful. For example, if you're shooting a political debate with two candidates, you might want to use Shot Mark 1 to tag good sound bites from one candidate and Shot Mark 2 for the other person. Or when you're shooting an athletic event, you could use Shot Mark 1 when the home team scores and Shot Mark 2 for the visitors. The final workflow benefit of XDCAM that I want to cover in this episode is called Clip Flags. If we go back to the Assign button menu screen and continue scrolling down the list of options, we'll come to four additional types of markers that can be embedded within the clips to speed up your workflow in post. These are called OK Mark, Clip Flag OK, Clip Flag No Good, and Clip Flag Keep. Collectively, all four of these are known as clip flags, including OK Mark, even though it doesn't have flag in its name. Unlike shot marks, which are used to pinpoint certain frames within lengthy clips, clip flags are used to mark an entire clip. For example, let's say you've been shooting multiple takes of a difficult scene, and you finally get one that you think is a keeper. You can mark that clip after you've stopped recording by pressing whichever assign button has been given one of the clip flag functions. Later, that embedded metadata will make it much easier to find that clip while you're editing. Clip flags and shot marks are supported by all the major NLEs, and there are many ways they can be utilized to filter, sort, and organize your clips to speed up your workflow in post. An important difference between the OK mark option and the other three types of clip flags is that OK marks only work with the camera's FAT video formats, and the others only work with the camera's UDF video formats. And if you don't know what the terms UDF and FAT mean, I strongly suggest that you watch episode 2 of this video series. An important difference between shot marks and clip flags is that shot marks must be inserted while you're recording or playing back, so that they mark a specific point of time within a clip. But clip flags can only be added after you've stopped rolling. Well, that's a quick look at four more ways XDCAM can significantly speed up your workflow and allow you to work more efficiently than ever before. And that brings us to the end of our fourth episode of XDCAM Essentials. I hope you found this video helpful, and I invite you to tune into our next video. Until then, happy shooting.